Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. A very happy Monday to all of you. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. This is going to be a general energy reading for your Monday, October 21st, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Yes, this is a general reading, okay? Also, this is a, um, this reading is, is not, uh, time sensitive yes so just because it's dated for the 21st doesn't mean it has to resonate for the 21st yeah whenever you come upon the reading and it resonates for you then that's the message for you at that time um i don't really have a pre-shuffle energy i didn't really feel like pulling one to be honest um i just wanted to get started with the reading and see what comes out for the day and we'll talk about it there yeah um so we're gonna get into that one last thing before i start uh we do have afternoon tea today yeah so we're going to be looking into love specifically for all of the signs and that's going to be live sometime this afternoon um last week i went live around noon i think that worked well um we'll see we should i should maybe around noonish maybe one o'clock we'll see how that goes yeah but keep in keep in mind that's happening today also if you can't make it out for the live don't worry about it it'll still be up later on so you'll be able or or it'll still be up so you'll be able to watch it later on yeah all right guys so um with that said let's just get straight into it and see what we've got for today okie dokie here we go Hi, Spirit. <laughs> Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Monday, October 21st, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're going to give this three shuffles, and then we'll see what we've got for today. One. Two. And three for the collective. It's, it's very interesting, you guys, because... Um, I guess we've been I guess we've been in another purging phase or I guess the emotions are really prominent for the collective right now um, because every time I you know consciously connect with the connect the, the collective I get I, I'm lately at least I'm seeing orange so and, and orange is the color of the sacral chakra yeah that's like your emotional body that's your feeling body that's you know the center of your emotions and whatnot and um, and I guess what I'm getting from that is the focus is on the motion, the emotions, clearing, keeping them clear, keeping them focused, I guess. Um, and, and it may not necessarily, yes, yeah, some, some people are purging. Okay. So, but it may not necessarily be that it may just be the fact that, you know, you're very conscious of what your, where your emotions are right now, what's going on with your emotions. Um, it's just, I just, I feel there's a focus on your emotions and keeping them clear and making sure that you're staying as happy as possible, or just making sure that you're conscious of how you're feeling and taking responsibility for that. That's a really good thing. And it's not, it's no easy feat. Let me tell you. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's see what we have for the collective for today. What do you want us to talk about today? Spirit Monday, October 21st. Let's see what we've got for today. Nothing so far, huh? Interesting. There's some. Okay, well. So far we have the High Priestess. Let me keep shuffling here. Five of Swords. Oof. Interesting. Interesting. 
Okay. There's the Nine of Wands again. It's interesting because when the High Priestess fell out, the Nine of Wands was on the side. It was on the top of the deck. And I didn't look at the bottom because I wanted to keep shuffling. But yeah, Spirit just said it isn't necessary. Okay, so what we have... Stop here. All right. Uh, overall energy, we have Temperance. And we also have the Nine of Wands on the other side. Now, when I saw the Nine of Wands before, it was the other side of the card in which, um, here, I'll show you, in which someone is, you know, is being coaxed into this cave here. But it's for healing purposes. I know that... <laughs> That does kind of look like a stranger danger situation. Um, but it's really meant, it's for the purposes of healing. <laughs> stranger danger. Okay. Um, but we have this side of the card right now where we just see this person standing there on his own, um, battered and bruised. With this side of the car, with this side of the deck being temperance, in which we see this side of the card represents talking about um, standing firm in your truth, in your convictions, and not compromising yourself, not giving in just for the sake of conformity, I just heard, or maybe even balance. This is this side of the card asks you to stay true to yourself, stay true to what you know, stay true to what you learned, stay true to who you who you are, not to compromise the essence of yourself just for the sake of balance, conformity, coming together with someone, whatever, however that resonates. I do feel how I, I am, I'm not gonna lie. I do feel like this, this has a heavy um, romantic feeling. Specifically, there is an energy of not compromising yourself not losing yourself, not forgetting who you are or what you've been through or what you've experienced just for the sake of, ooh, okay, a marriage, a family. Those are two things that I just heard specifically. Whatever this is for you, and this doesn't have to mean that... Okay, sorry, I was getting distracted because I was trying to figure out the flow of how I was going to move forward, but let me finish what I'm saying first. Saying first, this doesn't have to mean that you're in a relationship or you're in a marriage and now you're focused, now you're, um, now you're, you, you, I don't know, you're facing leaving that situation or something like that. I mean, if that's what you're, if that's the deal for you, for specifically, I feel like somebody, it, someone might be going through a situation in which they've gone through some sort of awakening here, okay? Uh, ju judgment, Queen of Swords, and also the High Priestess. You, so and it, it feels like someone is going through some sort of awakening, and now in order for you to like stay in a, oh boy, okay, I'm just going to say it, a loveless marriage. That's what I just heard. Um, and it's an energy there. Okay, so there might be a divorce coming. There might be a divorce coming for somebody. Um, and I think you're contemplating this. It's interesting because what I was trying to say before, leave it upright. Okay. What I was trying to say before is it doesn't have to be about some sort of marriage. But now, <laughs> as I'm continuing to talk about it, that's what's coming up. So for someone or for some of you out there, there is a relationship here in which um, in which you're having to compromise or I guess you're being required to or even you're being expected to compromise some sort of wisdom, knowledge, awake you've come into or some sort of awaken awakening that you've come to. And you're expected to compromise that for sake of keeping up appearance. And that's not healthy. And that is that is um, that is in direct opposition to some sort of awakening that you've gone through. Judgment, the high priestess. But with the high priestess, it's her. It's we're we're, we're looking at her back. But okay. But this side of the card is coming into a greater awareness, having being being let in on the high priestess's secrets. 
okay? Now, on the other side here, we have the Five of Swords with the hot, with the star. And it wasn't, we're not talking about the other side of the equation here. We're not talking about the other person that may be involved. Uh, well, this is just the other side of the table. <laughs> um, and originally, the star came out reversed. And I'm getting a feeling of there's some sort of... Yes. Okay. I was saying that there's some for there's some sort of sabotage, backstabbing energy, lose lose situation. And spirit said that is this that whatever the five of swords represents here, it's some form of conformity. It's some it's it's conformity in of some in some of some sort, right? And with the star in reverse, there is a lack of faith. Someone has lost faith in a situation. It could also be that you not having faith in the situation is this destructive, sabotaging energy. But even as I was trying to say, even as I was starting to say that, Spirit was like, yeah, no, that's not really the case here. The backstabbing energy, the destructive energy, the lose-lose situation is coming in terms of feeling like you need to compromise some sort of wisdom, knowledge that you've gained Hmm. Now, yes, we do have the Queen of Swords here. Don't so so, but don't get caught up on the gender. It has nothing to do with gender. The Queen of Swords is an individual that takes honesty and um, individual expression very seriously. The Queen of Swords can represent a divorcee. The Queen of Swords can also represent someone that has been hurt in the past and is not allow about to allow someone to hurt them again. Also though, what I'm getting from this Queen of Swords energy is so, this is someone who is quite fed up, I would say. And you might be, I'm hearing things like is losing sleep over something. Um, is not I keep hearing conformity is not looking to conform any longer this actually because now that I'm really looking into this Queen of Swords energy this actually could be a man I keep hearing conformity but don't get the don't get wrapped up in the gender this has nothing to do with gender okay this is energy and it's just the and the Queen of Swords represents an energy of someone feeling like they're ready to just cut something out you know, without really a second, uh, another thought, without any real discussion. It feels like someone has really made up their mind or has come to an understanding in which now they, they're ready to just, it just feels like someone is fed up, maybe even frustrated, ready to just cut something out. This Queen of Swords could also be a, a defensive energy. Standing firm, standing true in who she, who or he or she knows they are, um, what they understand about themselves, what they understand about life, what they understand about reality. These are all things that I'm just saying because I'm channeling them. They're 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 coming through. So the, this is so you know take it as it resonates. Um, the one thing about this. that I don't necessarily like is this, the Five of Swords with the star in reverse. I don't know what this is. I'm not, I'm, I, okay, there is a lack of faith here. Someone has in fact lost faith in a certain situation. We're gonna, yeah, let's look deeper into this because this, this is the, this is a little troubling, not gonna lie. And it, and the, really the only reason it's troubling is because it's the star. The star is major arcana. I hope you guys, I, I gotta work on my lighting situation. I, <laughs> let me see, hold on. Let me see if, I closed my blinds a little to, to keep some of the, a lot of the sunlight from coming in because it was, 
affecting the camera. But let's see if that's better. I guess it's a little better. But to be honest, I liked it better when it wasn't. Okay, hold on. Sorry, guys. But I, I just want to say the, um, the star reversed is major arcana. And the star represents healing. The star represents faith. It's, it represents destiny. And I don't like seeing it in reverse. That's... To just just to be to be quite honest, I don't like seeing it in reverse. We're gonna look at it deep, deeper, okay? We're gonna get into a deeper. We're gonna see more about it. Um, we could be talking about divine counterparts. I mean, that comes through a lot on this channel, even though you know I'm not specifically guiding these readings towards that. But that is kind of an energy that I'm picking up on now. And and if you have lost faith, it's almost as if it's almost an energy of having, I guess, given up. But you see, conformity keeps being repeated in my head. So that must be, excuse me guys, hold on. <coughs> that must be a major reason as to why this person has given up or lost faith or something like that. And, and, and with the Queen of Swords energy here, I'm feeling an energy of really holding something off, like really keeping something at bay holding something or someone at arm's length. It could be a person, it, this could, you could be physically doing this or you could be doing this energetically. But there is an energy of conformity that I feel like someone is really doing away with. Not really about to have that in their life. And I'm getting that mostly from judgment, the queen of swords, and the high priestess. We're seeing we're seeing the back of the high priestess in when base in, in which basically she's let us in to her chamber. She's let us in on her her secrets, on her awareness. And maybe not necessarily all of it, but enough to know exactly what's going on here, exactly what's going on around you, or enough to know that there is something that you are not about to allow into your life. Queen of Swords. The judgment card here, someone has gone through a massive awakening. Maybe not, well, yeah, yeah, you could say massive, okay. And now they're standing in their truth and their authenticity. This side of the card are these individuals in judgment are naked, okay? And, and, and being naked spiritually speaking, represents truth, honesty, integrity, um, individuality, purity, down to your purest of essence, to who you truly are as an, 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 you know, without any masks, without any clothing, without any cover-ups, anything. Just bare, naked you. Truth, honesty, integrity, that kind of thing. Okay, with all of that said, let's look into this. I want to look deeper into this. Five of Swords, the star in reverse. Now, it could be, it could be that the star is in reverse here. It's blocked or it's, it's, um, there is a blockage on some sort of destiny or there, I, I, I don't feel, what I feel like here is if this is a blockage, it's being held back for a reason. You might be doing this, but also the universe may be doing this on your behalf to protect you because of this Five of Swords energy, this extreme competition it could be, uh, backstabbing, one-upmanship, cheating, lying, stealing, um, sabotage, self-sabotage. The universe may be holding something at bay for you to keep you from sabotaging yourself, to keep, something like that. Now, you also energetically could be holding this at bay because of because you're holding your vibration. Your vibration is higher here, potentially. And that could be why you're not an energetic match to this right now, which makes perfect sense, okay? That is not in no way a bad thing. Regardless of <clears throat> whatever it is we're talking about here. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Even if we're talking about a counterpart situation, 
however you want to however you want to you want to label it twin flame divine counterpart soulmate whatever however you want to ma- label it it really doesn't matter it's just a label but um it does it also it really doesn't matter what it is it could be a twin flame it doesn't matter if if the energy is toxic and you are consciously holding keeping your vibration high enough so that you're not slipping into those toxic low vibrational situations then obviously it's going to be held at bay you're not going to be able it's not going to come through because you're not in alignment with it and i and ooh, okay these wanted to come out here the hanged man with the knight of cups okay ten of ten of wands is underneath the deck right now interesting Interesting. Before I really dive too deep into that, I want to look, I want to get a little bit more. I'm feeling like, I'm feeling called to pull more on this. So we have the Hanged Man with the Knight of Cups so far. Yeah, the Ten of Wands, Four of Wands, overall energy of the Eight of Swords. You know, with this Knight of Cups and the Ten of, uh, I'm sorry, and the um, the Hanged Man here, I feel like somebody is learning a lesson in terms of um, emotional manipulation. The Knight of Cups can be a very selfish individual, can be someone that is just... Um, after their own pleasure it can be it could be someone that's maybe a little emotionally manipulative it could be someone that um uses the emotions to get what he wants <clears throat> excuse me and i feel like with this hanged man energy an association with it i feel like somebody is kind of like trapped in something Emotionally speaking, it could be someone that's trapped in like in a relationship or what I'm really feeling here is someone is trapped in an identity of um, or like some sort of karmic cycle associated, wrapped up, associated with emotional manipulation. It's like there's momentum being that has been picked up or that has been um, generated here in terms of surface level romantic connections that don't really mean anything <clears throat> and this person that perpetuated this this does feel like a masculine energy so it can be a man it could also be a woman it feels mostly like a man but it doesn't matter it could really be anybody but it does feel like a masculine energy regardless of gender um, but this person has generated this momentum here, and now I feel like they're finding themselves stuck in it. <clears throat> but ultimately, I'm going to pull some more on this. Ultimately, though, this is a good thing. Because someone has the foundation, four of wands, to recognize this, ten of, ten of wands. And here you go, eight of swords. There's the entrapment. But I'm seeing an opportunity for someone to break free from this. But again, they have to choose to do so. <clears throat> That's what the Eight of Swords talks about. I mean, you can get your, cut yourself free, but you have to be the one to do it. So this person has to be the one to do it. And, and, and I feel like they're starting to recognize the error of their ways. Let's get a little bit more here. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling an energy of, so, yup, look at that. I'm feeling an energy of someone saying to themselves, holy shit, I can't do this anymore. Knight of Pentacles, look at that. Seven of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Yes, someone is learning their lesson, reaping what they've sown. And it really feels like someone is actually coming to the realization of what this 
does, Knight of Cups, going around acting like this Knight of Cups energy, basically just throwing, throwing, throwing love, emotion, using love and emotion as a manipulation tactic. That's what I'm feeling here. You have the Two of Cups with the Moon and the Five of Swords again. Someone throwing around romantic feelings. Someone being an, an emotionally romantic manipulator. Two of Cups, the Moon, Five of Swords. The Two of Cups representing that emotional, you know, you know romantic connection with someone. Maybe even multiple people. And, and if you're polyamorous, I'm not, I am in no way like judging you or passing judgment on you, but this is someone who... Um, <clears throat> who uses emotion as a manipulation tactic. The moon, they're not, they're not, they're shady about it. They're not, it's not clear. It's not, um, it's, there are things that are hidden. It's secretive, you know, it, it, it's, <sighs> and the five of swords. Because it's destructive. It not only hurts the other person that thinks that someone's being authentic, it also hurts the person that's being the manipulator. Why? Because then they start to generate all of this karma, Spirit just said. Ooh. You start to generate karma, or if you don't want to call it karma, you generate momentum in that direction. The more you put that energy out there, the more that's going to come back towards you. And someone, it really feels like someone is reaping what they've sown. Seven of Pentacles. They've made their bed, now they have to lay in it. Ultimately though, this is teaching them a lesson. Knight of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles slowly but surely they'll come out of this. I guess. The Knight, the Knight of Pentacles is another energy of that can represent stagnancy. That with coupled with the the hanged man, and that's some that's some pretty stagnant energy. It might even be stubbornness. Someone might not want to really grow up. Someone might want to just stay in this knight energy and not really grow up and to be a king. And you know what? That's on you that's totally that is totally totally on you like okay but then but you see this is the crux that you're finding yourself in here this is you're finding yourself between a rock and a hard place because you don't want to grow up but yet you're starting to feel the effects of all this emotional manipulation and to that i don't really quite know what to tell you buddy <laughs> i'm gonna be quite honest but then you have another person here, this counterpart that sees it very clearly and is like, nope, not doing that. You could stay far away from me with that one. <laughs> uh, all right. With all that said, let's get Spirit's guidance on this. Moving to the Golden Universal Tarot. And then we'll close the reading with some Oracle guidance here. All right, so what spirits take from the guides, from source, the angels, angels and guides and spirits of love and light that want to help guide people, improve, serve the highest good of all involved. Let's see what we've got here. One more shuffle. This... To be quite honest, you guys, this might be the effects of some sort of good old boys club type situation or type energy. Um, <clears throat> and it does feel like this is a counterpart masculine feminine situation. Again, regardless of gender, the gender does not matter. But it is the feminine here, or at least someone that is awakened to um, their, their own inner femininity. Um, and it could be someone that is very balanced between masculine and feminine energy and someone that has worked very hard to untwist them and you know you know re relieve themselves of the twisted forms of masculinity and femininity and, and really balance that out and again the spirit just said yes the awakening process someone has gone through an awakening process and someone here is still very much asleep
Okay, let's get Spirit's take on this. Okay, all right. Nine of Wands again, overall energy, okay. We have the Wheel of Fortune, the Five of Wands, Temperance yet again, Seven of Cups, and the Ten of Cups. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting. I've, th <clears throat> there's definitely a change in destiny that's coming through here for someone in this counterpart situation. There's definitely a change in destiny. Bear with me, I'm just trying to channel this here. Because to be quite honest, I'm seeing two sides. And yet, the, I'm seeing one individual and another individual I'm seeing this, this individual here with the Wheel of Fortune and Temperance, this individual going through some sort of massive awakening, change in direction, change in focus, whatnot, whatever, and then this other person that's still here with this Five of Wands, Seven of Cups energy, differing of opinion, okay, um, a lot of external influence, too many cooks in the kitchen, ego battles. It's almost as if an, it's, an, it's an energy of someone listening too much to everyone else instead of their own self. Okay, but in, the, in between the two of you is the Ten of Cups. So both of you are focused on the Ten of Cups here, but someone too, you, have, you both have very differing opinions about what that Ten of Cups is. And there is nothing wrong with that. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Now, with that said, I am, I'm trying to see this as like one complete message also, and, that, and it still does make sense because there is a rebalancing, a change in direction, a change in focus, again, like I said before, um, and that's causing a little bit of chaos here, and it's causing a bit of confusion with the Five of Wands and the Seven of Cups. It's like things are swirling around, and it, 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 yeah, it's almost as if, you know, um, it's almost as if the universe is reshuffling here in order to get you to your Ten of Cups. The focus here is the Ten of Cups. So I guess what Spirit is saying here, for those of, uh, for those of us that are in this energy with Judgment, the Queen of Swords, and the High Priestess here, keep your focus on the Ten of Cups. Because it's your focus on the Ten of Cups and what that means to you that's really allowing this situation to change. And this is why you're being asked twice now with, the high, with, with temperance that has come out here, you're being asked to not compromise what it is you seek out of life. What it is is your Ten of Cups. And that goes for the other person too. But you see, the other person, whomever it is that's in this, I guess we can say fuckboy energy, I don't know. Knight of Cups, this emotionally manipulative energy, even narcissistic energy. I just heard that, so okay, that fits. I'm, I mean, I'm hearing things like, well, they're kind of in alignment with themselves also. When they're going through their journey, they're going through their own process. They're going through their own healing journey. Okay, that's great. I'm, I mean, what Spirit is saying here with that is it's not for you to pass judgment on this person just because they're going in a direction that's that seems to be different than yours or that is not aligning that is not lining up with the destiny that you've written for yourselves before you came here okay well all right oh mm, that's a strange message Um, a topic of contention is destiny. 
There are a lot of there are people there there are many different I mean there are people that believe that you can't rewrite your destiny. There are people that believe that you can. I personally I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm not here to define that for anybody. I do feel like, however, with this element of free will, if things are really going south, or if things are really getting off course, or things are really going in a very different direction, I do feel like you have the opportunity or the chance to redefine some things for yourself. I don't know. I don't. I don't, honestly, I really don't even know. Because all, because then at the same time you can say, well, what about this? Do you think spirit would not have foreseen? You know what I mean. So then that takes me to this to this consciously saying, okay, well there there is obviously a lot more than we can really see in this conscious focus, current conscious focus. So really, why does it matter? Just focus on what is in front of you right now. Okay, see what's in front of you right now, but focus on what is your Ten of Cups and don't, and see, that's where we get into the energies of not focusing on one, on one specific person or it happening a certain way or it happening in a certain amount of time. You see, that's where, that's where that comes into play because, because from Spirit's view, zoomed out, it looks very different from where we're seeing it here in the situation, right? That was such a tangent, but I'm saying all that to say, don't worry about it. Focus on what is the, in, what is the 10 of cups for you and allow that to manifest in your life, regardless of who or who it comes from or where it comes from, how it manifests, whatnot, whatever. You've gone through an awakening process and you're still going through this awakening process. And you could even say the other person is going through it as well. They're going through it at their own pace. They're going through it in their own time. They're doing it their own way. And that's really all that matters here. That's all that's going to happen. I mean, you're not going to do it any other way than, than your own way. You're not really required to do it in any way than your own way. And that means that once you reach a certain level, you can say, okay, I don't want this in my life anymore. I, you can set greater boundaries, right? There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So just, just, just hold on to that, I guess. I hope this is making sense. <laughs> I really hope this is making sense. I guess the right people who, would, who are ready to hear the message will understand what I'm saying. Okay. Now, other thing that I'm getting here with this Five of Wands, Seven of Cups energy, um, for those of you that are really going in another direction, that seems to be away from some sort of counterpart. There is confusion. There is maybe even a little bit of guilt or shame associated with that. With this, I'm getting it from the Five of Wands here. In, in, and this is something that's been coming out a lot, and I've been trying my best to describe it as best I can. But with the Five of Wands, it's like, there's an energy of, well, you shouldn't be doing anything that goes against your counterpart. And it's like, well, wait a second. Why not? If I am the master of my own domain, if I'm in control of my life, then why can't I do things that make me happy? Why can't I follow things that make me happy? But there is that conformity. There's that control. Do not compromise that which you've learned about yourself and existence and reality and whatnot just for the sake of conformity. Okay? No way. Not doing it. Not doing it. Let's get your oracle guidance here. Dragons. All right. You know, one last thing before I get to the, the, the oracle section or the oracle card here. I'm, I'm hearing, th I'm hearing like, do not compromise, do not conform. 
there are certain things that are not worth compromising on. And your spiritual integrity, your, in, your, 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 your integrity is one of them. I mean, obviously, we're going to have to, we're going to have to, you know, work together and compromise or find some, some, some common ground at some point. But when it comes to your own personal integrity, that is not something that you compromise on. That is not something. No, absolutely not. And that's the Queen of Swords energy right there. Okay. All right, let's get your Oracle guidance. From the dragons here, what oracle guidance do you have us have for us in terms of this situation? Ooh, that's a lot. That's too much. <laughs> oh my god, really? It was like four cards. All right, <laughs> we're gonna take them. We're gonna look at them. I don't know if I'm gonna read all of them from the book, but let's see what we've got. Wow, okay, so we have Silver Dragon. Illuminates your potential with higher light. Access untapped resources. Look into your soul. See higher possibilities. You have Blylac Sapphire Dragon. Transmutes through the divine power of love. Open up to transcendent love and enlightenment. Purity of heart brings peace, hope, and joy. You have Magenta Dragon. Enables you to bring forward your soul wisdom. Awaken your soul memories <clears throat> and higher spiritual spiritual understanding. Prepare for accelerated ascension, <clears throat> accelerated ascension. Excuse me. And you have Earth and Fire Dragon, works with you to clear the fifth dimensional ley lines. It's time for service. When you give, you receive. Just read one of them. Ah. <sighs> I really want to read Magenta Dragon. I heard Lilac Fire and Magenta, and I'm also being pulled towards the Magenta Dragon. Okay. So we're, I'm going to read both of them. Magenta Dragon is a fifth dimensional dragon, and so is the Lilac Fire. So we're going to start with Lilac Fire, page 44. These dragons are fifth dimensional. However, they can reach up into the ninth dimension to access the awesome lilac fire of source, which is a new energy recently graced to earth. This carries transcendent love as well as enlightenment. When these dragons pour lilac fire over and through us, we are bathed in divine feminine light, which has the power to dissolve all lower energies in pure love and bring us peace, hope, and joy. It also bathes us in the higher divine feminine qualities of wisdom, agape, and oneness. Having this energy in our aura may even allow us to experience bliss and ecstasy. The guidance here says, when you choose this card, the lilac fire dragon will touch you with incredible ninth dimensional light. So call it in and ask it to touch you. As it approaches you, breathe in divine love and sense the lilac fire enveloping you. This will enable you to let go of the old easily, calmly, and graciously. Notice particularly how you feel when this dragon touches you and sense the purity of love that it radiates. Ask the dragon to remain with you to anchor the glorious light of the lilac fire and take you into its new and illuminated way of being. Or, in, sorry, take you into a new and illuminated way of being. When you do this, the love radiating from your heart will become purer and more beautiful. People will sense this and respond with trust, respect, and gratitude. Consciously work with this beautiful dragon and notice the difference it makes in your life, I'm sorry, to your life and the quality of love around you. That's beautiful. And finally, I want to read this magenta dragon. Do 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 72. Seven to deuce, seven to deuce, <laughs> magenta dragon. Glorious fifth dimensional magenta dragons accompany us on our eternal soul journey as we experience and learn from all the, from all the universe's planes and dimensions. As they travel with us, they remind us that we are immediate, I'm sorry, that we are immensely wise and learned beings with so much to offer. 
because we have gone through the veils of amnesia, we have forgotten who we truly are. As soon as magenta dragons connect with us, they prepare us to remember our unique role in this universe. They play, they play, they place us in an extraordinarily deep pink flame of love, higher spiritual understanding and wisdom. They work with Archangel Mariel, who is in charge of the soul star chakras of humanity. The dragons prepare the way so that the archangel can wake us, yes, can wake us up at a deep soul level. Once we have woken, we can never see ourselves in the same way again. We recognize who we are, who we truly are, and bring forward our soul mission. The guidance in this card says, this is a card of accelerated ascension. A magenta dragon is here to remind you that you are an illuminated soul carrying much wisdom. It is helping you to dissolve any remaining veils of illusion and preparing you to become an enlightened one. It has come to you now to remind you that all is love, for we are all one. It is time to see all things with the wise inner eyes of truth. Treat everyone as if they were you. Your guidance is to sit is to sit quietly with your magenta dragon and allow the door to your vast soul memories to open. When you reveal to yourself who you truly are, you will help to bring forward the new golden age. Okay, well, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, I look forward to seeing you all for our live, for our afternoon tea, yes. But with that, I hope you guys have a great day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.